Hey, it's Earthboy here, and I am with the AAU Review. Well, Tim, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Festival of the Sun. You've been here before, haven't you? I have, many years ago. Um, Joyride reminded me because he has a photo of him basically lying on me at the, uh, <laughs> at the, the cheap motel where we stayed afterwards that night. So, um, yeah, I, I love this festival. It's great. For me, this sort of represents really that grassroots festival that Australia has always had. I mean, for the last, um, you know, for 40 years, there's been people playing music on a beach and this is kind of, you know, longer than that, surely, but, you know, particularly for the last 40 years. Um, you know, it feels very, I mean, some people were saying before, this feels like, this feels very Australian. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably true. I mean, it's a kind of laid back atmosphere. It's a festival of the sun. I mean, it's a beautiful spot in that you're in the middle of a camping ground. You know, there's tents and caravans and the beach is right there. And the, the festival can't really be too massive. And in all the years it's been running, it hasn't expanded. It just has stayed its charming self. And um, I think it, it's right for the size of the town. And it's in a beautiful area of mid-north coast, New South Wales. and. Yeah, I, I can understand its appeal. It's it's nice to be able to just drive in, and I mean it's BYO. I mean, geez, you know, like that's asking for trouble. But I think it's partly the the way that the organisers have put it together that they can manage that without it getting out of control. Yeah, I mean, when you keep the numbers at this sort of level, it's yeah. um, it makes it makes it a just great experience for everyone. Yeah, um, we need more festivals like it. I think. Um, Tomorrow, you've got a, a special birthday party. You know, what, is, uh, what, what does it mean to hit this milestone for, for Elephant Tracks? Um, yeah, I don't really think about the milestone too much. I mean, we wanted to throw a party because it seemed like you throw a party when you're 18. And, um, you know, we're a label, but whatever. Uh, may as well throw a party. But I don't really think of it as a milestone. I mean, if anything, it's maybe a testament to just hanging in there. And really hanging in there is underrated. I think being able to hang in there in any kind of context, that generally will pay off at some point, whether it be in just a, a, a job that doesn't have a public profile or whether it's a label or, or whatnot. Just hang in there long enough. You know, there's some good things that are gonna happen. And of course, there's a lot of challenges. Of course, there's a lot of stuff that's boring and depressing and hard to deal with and challenging and frustrating but you don't really talk about that so much you really reflect on the good times and I guess you just always want to have a bit of hope there and yeah so hanging in there is I think it's more of a testament to hanging in there than it is like a, a, a milestone for me uh, yeah numbers are numbers if I'm if we are running at 18 years old and not really having a relevance to to people who are listening to music I don't know what we you know, I'd, I don't think it'd be worth continuing doing it. I think it'd be maybe a hobby, but we we try and marry the, the twin ideas of having a real community set up with being a business. And those two concerns are always completely interrelated. There's never, well, we're just gonna operate this as a business. Always the, the concerns of what we're trying to do, the ethical concerns of what we're trying to do is always yeah. informing the commercial stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's good to still be here. Should, you should put out some Elephant Tracks T-shirts with that cat that's hanging on the hanging on the uh, the tr the tree thing with the the you know just hang in there. That's it. Just hang in there, kid. I think more. <laughs> I think it's more like the dog sitting at the computer. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's probably more right. That's right. That's just. The, I mean, either of those things applies to anyone in this industry. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, except you know, except for the few that have had a bit of dumb luck, at, you know, at some point, but um, at the, in the early days. But um, well, congratulations on it all the same. Thank it's, you. Uh, you know, it's such an important, uh, it's such an important label in Australia, and to have lasted this long, as as to have hung in there this long, is is uh, you know, huge respect to you for that. So congratulations. Thank you. The further you get into that, as well, is it is it harder to find time to write your own music? Uh, I think it's definitely a. a uh yeah, I mean, it's a, it's like anything, you, you, I have too many good things going on. I have a beautiful daughter that I want to spend time with and my, my partner, you know, I love my family. 
I have bands that I manage and I love you know being involved in their career I love watching Hermitude blow up I love watching Horror Show blow up I love working with Joyride then I got the label the label I love working with people like El Fresh and B-Wise and Okenyo um, The Last Connection Jim Blah, all these different artists get a huge thrill from that so you know if I wanted to just focus on music I'd have to let those things go but I like them too much so you know I have too many good things that I've been fortunate enough to be uh, you know keeping me busy so yeah being able to do music is an essential ingredient in my life if I don't have it everything goes out of balance mm. so um, so yeah it's hard but you just make time it's just what it is I mean I, I finish work and I go home and we do everything and then I go into the studio but I have unfinished business so whilst ever I've got that it's okay make time <laughs>